Uh, we have a guest that I just love this woman. She is fantastic. Uh, we go back a lot of ways, all the way back into the 90s. And uh, Kim Campbell is on. She's former uh, Canadian Customs, and she has a phenomenal um, uh, consulting business. She's been in the private sector as well after Customs. And uh, so anyway, all said and done, Kim, I want to welcome you to our show. We're going to have some fun today, I think. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be back for a return visit and uh, talk about my favorite four-letter word called CARM. <laughs> I also want to want to take um, a moment and also talk about a idea that we talked to and pitched to Kim, and we hope this comes through, but um, we're going to make every effort to do this. But we uh, talked to Kim about doing a monthly check-in on Canadian trade, so everything trade. So um, we're kind of introducing that right now. It's not necessarily the the, the formal version of it, but we, we hope to. Uh, maybe in a few weeks, a couple of weeks from now, um, we will have another guest uh, along with Kim uh, to talk a little bit more details, anything that may have changed with regards to 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 CARM. But um, I just want to make sure that that we we did say that because um, we're hoping to expand our coverage of trade and customs only because um, people see um, Canada as a 51st state, you know, so it's, <laughs> they just import and export, right? I mean, that, that's kind Big of what happens, there. right? They, 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 we, they, a lot of people think, well, we can just ship it to Canada without thinking, well, it's actually an, an export. Absolutely. You know, it's well, actually, and I think the other yeah. really important thing too, is a lot of your viewership probably have oversight to the U S market. Um, and I know that um, at conferences, they're, always appreciative to have a little track there to kind of give them the insights to help manage that piece of their responsibilities. So in a nutshell, originally CARM was supposed to be an upgrade and, um, you know, uh, trying to be a little more in line with some of the requirements around World Customs Organization, uh, revised data sets, uh, because the system is almost 40 years old. So in essence, we are changing our what we call B3, which the U.S. knows as 7501s. Uh, into this new framework, and we're going to be moving on to ne new technology, including cloud. Um, you know, the new technology is exciting. We've been sitting on this 40-year-old backbone. So that was the crux of how we started this thing, and we started it in 2012. I say it's prop properly funded in 2018, um, and we expect it to be implemented by 2021. But here we are, uh, May 2024, uh, after many years and many I've actually started in my head to add up the amount of time and energy that I personally put in into it. And it's quite mind boggling. Um, but we will be going off the cliff, as we like to say, in Canada, May 13th, 2024, as we go big bang approach and implement this system all at once. There's still a lot of issues to to dig into here and things that need to be addressed. But I just want to talk about that one specifically, because I know, Andy, when we talked about it on the last podcast, uh, we had very big concerns about it, as did, of course, all traders in coming in uh, to Canada, including not concluding non-residents. That's definitely been a lot of angst uh, within the importing community. So um, and really the crux of that was that main big, big bang, oh, oh going to be a big problem was customs was insisting that every single importer have this portal account in this CARM environment. And if they did not, their goods would have to stop at the border and a hard copy entry would have to be put in to get the goods released and also pay duties and taxes at the border. So again, very grateful that we have this major reversal of fortune. Um, but, you know, it took us six years banging our head against the wall and then having to go publicly in front of a House of Commons committee to make that happen. It sounds like those companies need to get involved in this to have their input and influence put towards those that have been involved from the Canadian government side of the uh, house. And for a lot of uh, members or your uh, viewership here, uh, they would be customs brokers. Um, certainly the customs brokers have a lot of um, statements they've made. You could certainly support that. I can tell you uh, through my other volunteer work that the three brokers associations uh, in, uh, I should say four in total, two in Canada uh, are and the NCBFA and Karim have just put out a statement on this. So um, that one is something we could get out as well. And if people just want to support it, uh, 
that would be great. Again, Andy, to your point, talking about exporting and importing, we feel this topic is big enough that these four associations have come together to make a statement on behalf of trade. So uh, definitely lots of time and the perfect time to do it now uh, because May 13th is fast approaching. And um, we can certainly talk a little bit about the cutover as well, because I think a lot of people are trying to figure out what do I need to do day one, if anything, because I hear all these mixed messages. And this Lalo is maybe a little bit of tease for the next one we will do sooner than later, uh, because we are still waiting for some of that last minute transition um, instruction. Can you imagine as not only an importer, but service providers having to have a big bang May 13th and we don't even have final written implementing instructions? I don't know if this is going to be silly or not, but what are the odds that or the chances that this rollout could be a lot like um, the Y2K thing? Like, remember Y2K? Everybody was so scared yeah. that everything was going to shut yeah. down and That's all systems point. were going to... Yeah. And and well, nothing we, happened. We, it was a nothing burger, happened. as they say. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, Marlo? I hope that's what happens, quite honestly. Like, you know, my personal advocacy is because I don't want my border disrupted and I don't want my economy to be impacted, which would happen if, if you know, it doesn't work quite that well. I really hope I'm wrong. I 100% do. I would pay a lot. I would happily buy a lot of people drinks if I'm wrong. And actually, maybe longer, because even after the system comes up, it's like there's going to be issues coming back up and, and whatnot. So the, the, what could you handle your own customer orders, your customer service departments responding to your clients that now the supply chain is disrupted potentially in this? Now, supposedly cargo's coming in, it would be able to be released in theory that this is a big net new change. Yes, this is a big net new change. Like up until 14th, we were like told, no, everything's going to park if you didn't have a portal account. So this is a bet new change, which should really not make, like, that should not happen. It just should not. The only thing that, Andy, to your pointing out is as we do the conversion, like will the release systems be impacted? They, you know, in theory, they shouldn't be completely, but we know there is integration between the two. We also know that, you know, some of the main edits that were going to be in there to stop release are going to have to be changed. And based on what we've seen so far, that's not always a, has been a smooth thing in the last, you know, six years dealing with this project. So it's something to, I would say, like, we're kind of, repos we have repositioned our advice out to our own uh, importers through the IE Canada, uh, my not-for-profit group. I just kind of said, hey, good news. We don't expect large scale border disruption as we advised, but we still want you to consider like you just said, Andy, um, but plan for a whole bunch of confusion through the back end parts around payments. Are the duties and taxes being calculated? <laughs>